Start diversifying your assets. Do not trust in your local currency which fluctuates with events. Protect your wealth. Gold and silver are always in demand and are limited in supply so you can always find buyers. Always scout around for desperate buyers who are trying to liquidate their gold and silver for currency. They are your best people to target when you are buying gold. You can even offer low ball offers and see who will take the bait. Like attracts like. So the more wealth you store away, the more you are likely to attract. Besides, keeping it as precious metals is a form of saving. You are not tempted to spend your money. And remember that a penny saved is a penny earned. There you have it. Be sure to invest wisely. A trader's mindset is very important. Psychology is infinitely more important than how much you have to invest. A trader with little money but strong psychology is infinitely better than a trader with a weak mind and lots of money. Why is that? Because a person with a proper mindset can double, triple, or quadruple their money while a person with a poor psychology can lose it all overnight. The key is to be detached with your money. It is better to trade with money that you can spare rather than money you depend on, life or that money. Can you hold a trade? What happens when the price takes a plunge? Do you understand that gold and silver trading is like buying a house? No matter what the price of a house will always go up, but it is a matter of how long can you hold. Above all, remember not to rely on gold and silver trading as your only source of income. Most people, when they put all their eggs in one basket, make bad decisions because it represents all or most of their wealth. When you have income coming in from diverse locations or even other commodities you are trading with, you will make better decisions. Knowing when to exit is critical as well. If you feel that you have earned enough, it's better to cut the trade and invest it in another commodity. Likewise, it is okay to cut your losses and invest elsewhere. Next, we will look at why you should invest in gold and silver now. Am I looking for a quick cash or am I in this for the long haul? Are the metals I'm buying genuine, real, authentic? Are you buying at a low or at high? Are you buying paper metals or real bullion? Have I diversified my portfolios enough? Don't put all your investments in one basket. In our next video, we will look at the psychology for any precious metal trade. Advantages Preserve your wealth. Anyone can trade gold for any other currency if anything happens to a country's currency. Jewels are made of gold or silver can also be easily traded. You can find other buyers for your form of currency because gold and silver is a universal currency. Disadvantages You can't easily liquidate your metals. You will need to find buyers. The spread can be high. In other words, you will pay a lot of commission to gold and silver sellers. It is a defensive strategy. Even if you gain money through gold, your currency devalues. You do not earn interest from the bank. Next. We will look at five questions to ask yourself before making any investment. In 1971, President Nixon severed the U.S. dollar's ties with the gold system. The U.S. Treasury was running out of gold as more and more people were exchanging their U.S. dollars back to gold. People were starting to lose confidence in the U.S. dollar and more and more people were emptying the gold reserve. In act of desperation, President Nixon severed the gold standard thus enabling the U.S. to continually print money. They were effectively creating their own debt and generating as much debt as they wanted in the form of currency. Over the years, the U.S. dollar started dropping and the price of goods started to go up. Now why is that? It is because the U.S. dollar is continually losing its value to the point that, compared to 40 years ago, the U.S. dollar is only worth a fraction of what it used to be. Because currency starts to lose its value, especially with the whole world's currencies, hedged against the U.S. dollar, the price of gold and silver starts rising at an astronomical rate. The demand for gold and silver starts increasing, and the increased demand for it spikes up the price even more. In our next video, we will look at the advantages and disadvantages of investing in gold and silver. Did you know that all...
Did you know that gold and silver are one of the oldest forms of currency in the world? These two metals have been traded around the world for thousands of years. Printed money doesn't even come close to the value of gold and silver. In many ways, people still consider it as the de facto standard for currency. In the past, gold has always been known as a symbol of the rich and the elite. Silver is also precious but in more functional ways. Gold, we see it as jewelry and silver as silverware. Gold and silver is a sign of money and power. They are soft enough to be molded into different forms and its form gives beauty that entrances people. Unlike currency in the form of paper money, you can't print it out of thin air, so it is inherently valuable. The gold standard is what governments use as a comparison of currency. When a government is using the gold standard, it means that they are basing their currency and valuations on a worth equal to an amount in precious metals, namely gold and silver. The United States used to use the gold standard. In our next video, we will look at why the price of gold and silver is rising.